Here we are in chapter three, and our title for this section is Parallel Lines and Transversals. Let's first talk about what a parallel line is, or what parallel lines are, I should say. So let's talk, let's um, put a line right here. I'll just kind of demonstrate it. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it. That's exactly what I did right there. Just scooch it down, give us some extra room. Okay, so I took this line, I copied it, and I pasted it, and I put it right here. So uh, the angle, they're both horizontal, okay, I made them horizontal, um, but they could, be, they could be any angle. But as long as they're both going in the same exact direction, these would be considered parallel lines. But to be a little bit more specific, it, if you look at the definition of the book, it's on page 171, it says parallel lines are coplanar lines. Do you remember what coplanar means? We did this in the first chapter. Coplanar means they lie on the same plane. So consider this blackboard or whatever you want to call this background right here, This the plane, okay? So that's the, the flat plane. Both of these are in the same plane and they do not intersect each other. So they're never going to touch each other, right? So if they're in the same plane, if they lie on the same surface, and, they'll ne and they never touch each other, then we consider them to be parallel lines. Now let me just show you a little, uh, little thing. Now a lot of times you'll see the arrows on the end of the lines. Sometimes they don't put the arrows on the end of the lines. Um, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily a line segment. It still could be a line, but sometimes they'll do this. Now let's do this next part in another color. In order to say that these lines are parallel, let's call this line L and line M. If I wanted to show you like um, graphically on here uh, that they're parallel to each other, what we would do is we'd put an arrow inside of the two lines, kind of like that, and then another one. And you usually put the arrows pretty close to each other like this, pr pretty much on the same spot on the line. Um, so this is how we draw it out. So if I just saw this and I didn't say anything about it, I didn't say that they were parallel, I just showed you this picture called this line L, line M, and I saw this arrow here and this arrow here, that automatically means that those two lines are parallel to each other. Let's go a little bit further and show you the little um, a, a little symbol for parallel. So instead of saying line L and then writing out is parallel to line M, here's a nice easy way that we do it. Put line L and then here's the symbol for parallel. It's just two straight up and down lines just like that. So line L is parallel to line M. So that's our symbol right there. So instead of writing out the word is parallel to, we just put that little symbol and that means that these two lines are parallel to each other. All right. Um, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have labeled this line with two points instead. And the same thing down here, just call this CD. All right, I could call it line L and M, or I could call it what? Again, this is just review from the first chapter. I could call it line AB and line CD. So another way I could write this, I could say that line AB, and I put the line symbol over top of it, is parallel to line CD. Pretty much the same thing as I just did right here, but I'm just kind of reviewing a little bit on how to name the lines, other ways to name the lines. And that's what we know about parallel lines. Now there's a lot of stuff we're going to learn a little bit later on about parallel lines, but this is a good start. And um, let's talk about two lines that, remember, this is coplanar, means they lie in the same plane, and they don't intersect. So parallel lines will never touch each other. So if this one just bent just a little bit, just a little bit, eventually they would touch each other. Okay, if I kept on going, going far enough, they would touch. But if they're going along the exact same direction, then, um, and they don't touch each other, we could consider them parallel. Now, they don't have to be horizontal like that. They could be at some kind of an angle. Again, I'm copying and pasting right here just to show you that they go at the same angle. So these two lines right here would be considered parallel as well. And if I call that little a and little b, then I could say that line a is parallel to line b. That's if they put a little arrow symbol. Now, if I didn't have the arrow there, if that's what I had right here, let's pretend we didn't say this. Okay, if that's all I had, and you're like, well, that, that looks like they're parallel. It doesn't look like they're going to touch each other. It looks like they're, you know, the same steepness or whatever. It looks like they're going at the same angle, so it looks like they'll never touch each other. You can't just go by that. You have to know some information about it. So they could tell you, or they could put the little arrows here, that would indicate that they're parallel to each other. If they didn't put the two arrows there, they would have to tell you somehow. 
and they might just do this. They might say, um, okay, in this figure, uh, line A is parallel to line B, and then you would know they're parallel, all right? And again, they might not say anything. You just might have to look at the picture and they put these little arrows. Usually they put them in red or another color or something. I think in the book, for the most part, they put them red. And um, if they put those little red arrows there, that means that they are parallel to each other. Okay, let's talk about two lines that are not parallel, but they don't lie in the same plane. And we call these skew lines. Kind of funny words, skew lines. We're not gonna talk about this all that often, um, but every once in a while, uh, we will. Okay, I grabbed a little picture right here that kind of demonstrates uh, skew lines. Now, remember, parallel lines, they, lied in the same they lie in the same plane, which means they're coplanar. What about two lines that don't intersect that lie in different planes? Now, it'd be kind of hard to draw this myself on here. I guess I could, but um, I just grabbed this off the internet and it shows it pretty well. Look, here's two different planes. This is A, plane A looks kind of bluish, and this is plane B on the bottom. So this is the top of the box, this is the bottom of the box, this kind of looks greenish. Now if I had a line going in this direction on plane A, this direction on plane B, if you take a look at it, they lie in different planes, don't they? This is in A, this is in B, and um, they're in two completely different planes, and they will never touch each other. Does that mean that they're parallel to each other? No, not at all. If they lie in different planes, if they're non-coplanar and they don't intersect, they do not intersect, they don't touch each other, we call them skew lines. Now there's really not a lot of fancy stuff that we're gonna learn about skew lines, um, but parallel lines, there's definitely a lot of stuff we're gonna learn about parallel lines. Okay, here's a little example. This is not exactly the one in the book, but it's real, real close to it. I just grabbed this picture again off the internet and I just labeled it. So here's a couple questions that they could ask you, possibly ask you about this situation. They could say, name, um, name all the segments that are skew. So name all the segments, let's write that down. Name all the segments that are skew, S-K-E-W, to uh, let's say, let's say AB, all right, to line AB. Now, now it says name the segments. They do start and stop right here. I could have called this a line. I could have called it a line segment. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. It, they did say segment, so you know what? It'd probably be best if I just took the line part off of it and just put line segment. All right, so name all the things that are skewed to AB. So let's take a look. What about EF? Is EF, and let's, um, let's draw a little line right here just to kind of highlight it and make it a little thicker so that we can see it a little bit better. There we go. This blue one right here. I want to find all the segments that are skew to uh, line segment AB. And what does that mean? It means it cannot lie on the same plane. So what about EF? Is that skew? No, it lies on the same plane. Now they don't touch. What about AE? No, nope, it touches. So I definitely know AE would not be in it. Plus it lies on the same plane. BF? No. Uh, let's see, what else? Let's see, what about DC? Hmm, it looks like DC. It looks like it's in another plane, right? This is on the top, this is on the bottom. But if you look at it, see this side right here? ADCB or ABCD, all right? Let's see, am I looking at that right the right way? What did I say? I forgot already. Was I saying EF? I can't remember what I said. You can go back and see. Okay, let, let's go EF then. Um, it's not to EF. Oh, DC. That's what I said. Is it um, to DC? Well, ABCD, that face right there, um, it's part of that. So it's, um, so it's not going to be skew. It could be parallel, but it's not going to be skew. So what would be a skew? Hmm, what about HG? Look at HG. HG is not on any of the planes that AB is on. All right. So HG would be skew and it doesn't look like it's going to touch. All right, what about DH? DH lies along the bottom here and AB lies along the top. Doesn't look like they'll touch. Even though they're not really going in the same direction, that's perfectly fine. It's going this direction, AB is going this one, so that would be skew. What about CG? That would be skew as well. All right, so those would be the segments that would be skew to AB. What about parallel? Let's just stick with the uh, segment AB. Tell you what, I was looking at this before and 
almost looked like it started spinning or something. I don't know. It, it almost took, started looking real crazy looking. Uh, I don't know if that happens to you or not. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just getting late. All right, here we go. What about parallel? They got to be in the same plane. So this A, B, F, E, that's the same plane right there. So E, F, that would not intersect. So E, F would be parallel to A, B. I'm not going to write these down. You can write them down if you want. But E, F would be parallel to A, B. What about A, E? Well, it's in the same plane, but they're going to touch each other. So there's no way that that's going to be. What, what else is in the same plane? Well, you got the top, but this edge right here is also a part of a side. What about this side right here? Um, a, B, F, E. Do you see that right there? So what about E, F? E, F would be parallel to A, B. Did I already say that? I'm telling you, my mind is going. How, let's go to D, C. All right. So D, C would be in the same plane. A, B, C, D right here. I'm telling you, I look at it one way and it looks different. And I look at it another way and it looks different. I don't know if that's happening to you or not. I should have picked a different picture. This is freaking me out a little bit. But anyway, A, B, and DC, they look parallel because they are in the same plane right here and they're not going to intersect each other. All right, so they would be parallel to each other. And that's it. That would be it because all the other ones would be in different planes or that they would, um, they would intersect. All right, so that's the kind of stuff that they are going to ask. All right, enough of that, enough of skew and if they're parallel to each other. Let's get to the transversal part. This is the part that we really want to get into. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two lines. Now, these are not necessarily parallel to each other, all right? So I want you to understand that. Now, in the lesson, in the next lesson, we're going to talk more specifically about lines that are parallel to each other. So these are not necessarily parallel to each other. I drew them so that they really don't look. Because if this kept on going this way and this kept on going this way, they would eventually intersect each other. And so they're not parallel. But what I want to do is I want to talk about that thing called a transversal. Well, the transversal, what it does, it crosses two lines. It doesn't just have to cross parallel lines. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more um, other lines. That's all it is. So this red line right here intersects those two blue ones. So I call that a transversal. Transversal, if you look it up, basically means to go across, to, to move across. And um, that's what this is doing. This is going across two lines. So that would be transversal. Let's put some uh, letters in here and name these. Um, we'll call them anything. Call it L and M is one that the books love to use. And for uh, the transversal, we'll call T for transversal. All right, so here's our transversal and here are um, our two lines. Now, what I'm going to do, you've got a lot of angles that are formed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fill them in with some numbers. All right, I'm just naming the angles. That's all I'm doing. One through eight. This right here is angle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as you see. We have different names for these. And I think it's kind of important because they're going to learn, we're going to learn some um, some theorems, some rules, postulates, okay, those are just fancy geometry words for different rules, and um, they all deal with these words. So this lesson is basically more vocab than anything. It's not really learning any kind of relationship between the angles. We'll do that in the next lesson. This lesson is just talking about the, um, the words, the vocab, all right? So let's take a look at... Um, Let's look at the two uh, blue lines first of all. So any of these angles, three, four, five, and six, look where they are. They are kind of in between. Do you see all that? I just, that's shading, by the way. I shaded in between those two blue, blue lines. So I would call any angle inside those two blue lines, I would call them interior. I would call them interior angles, all right? Any angle. So which would be my interior angles? It would be three, four, five, and six. Let's get rid of those shaded in yellow lines. Okay, so any angles inside the two blue lines right there would be interior angles. So guess what? Guess what the angles on the outside of the two blue lines would be? They would be called exterior angles. So this would be an exterior angle and any angle out here on this end would also be an exterior angle. So I've got interior, I've got exterior. So if I asked you to list the interior angles, you would say angle three, four, five, and six. If I asked you to label the exterior angles, you would label one, two, 
7 and 8. They would be the exterior angles. But let's get a little bit more specific. What I want to do is I want to talk about this angle and this angle. Well, first of all, they're interior angles. They're in between the two blue lines. But look at it. This one is on one side of the transversal, and this one is on the other side of the transversal, and so is this one. But look where it is. It's way down here on the other end. Okay, They're complete opposites of each other. They're not just across from each other. They're not just adjacent. One is here and one is here. So what I'm going to do is let's list this. Angle 3 and angle 6 are going to be what we're talking about. And also, is there another pair that kind of share that? They're complete opposites. One's on one side of the transversal up here, and one's on the other side of the transversal down here, and they're all interior angles. What would that be? Well, that would be 4 and 5. So angle 4 and 5 kind of share the same thing. We have a name for this, and we call them alternate, alternate interior, I'll just put INT, angles. Alternate interior angles. So 3 and 6 would be alternate interior angles. 4 and 5 would be alternate interior angles. Not 3 and 4, because 4 is up here in this group. With the 3, it's got to be completely different. So the 3 and the 6 kind of go together. And we'll talk about the relationship tomorrow. And the uh, 4 and the 5 go together. They're called alternate interior angles. And we're going to learn a lot more about those um, in the next lesson, but right now we're just learning the names. Let's learn some other ones. Now we talked about alternate interior angles. What about alternate exterior angles? So now you kind of get the idea of what's going on. So now we're talking about the exterior angles. So let's start with angle one. What would an alternate exterior angle be with angle one? Well, you know it's got to be on the other side of the transversal, and it has to be down. See how you get this group of four and this group of four? It's got to be completely opposite. So it wouldn't be one and two. It wouldn't be one and four because one four is an interior. What we want is we want alternate, I'll shorthand alternate, exterior, and I'll shorthand exterior angles. So angle one and what? Well, it's got to be on the other side of the transversal, and it's got to be down in this group, and it has to be an exterior angle. So what angle works? Angle eight. So angle one and angle eight would be alternate exterior angles. What's another group of alternate exterior angles? Well, angle two is another exterior angle. Which other angle is on the opposite side of the transversal and down in this other group? Well, it has to be 7, because 5 and 6 are interior, 7 is your only exterior. It's not on this one, it's not 8, because it's got to be on the other side of the transversal. So it's 2 and 7, angle 2 and angle 7. Again, in the next lesson, we're going to learn some specific stuff about alternate exterior angles. Right now, I just want you to be able to tell which ones they are. So 2 and 7 would be alternate exterior angles. Let's look at another set of angles. What I want to do, let's start with angle one. Remember I talked about this group of four angles up here. See there's like a clump of four here and a clump of four down here. What I want to do is I want to see which ones are basically in the same position. So look at angle one. In this group of four up here, angle one is kind of in that top left hand side of these four. So if you come down here, which one matches up with it? Which one is in basically the same place as angle one? Well, angle 5 would be, because that's also in the top left hand of this clump, okay, this group of four angles down here. So 1 and 5 actually match up with each other. But we don't call them matching up angles. We call them corresponding angles. Corresponding, because they correspond with each other, all right? So these are corresponding angles. So let's list the corresponding angles. Angle 1 and angle 5 would correspond to each other because they're basically in the same spot. What about angle 2 right here? Which one down here corresponds to angle 2? Well, angle 6 would because it's in the top right-hand spot. So angle 2 and angle 6 would correspond to each other. Let's list the rest of them. What about angle 3? Well, which one down here fits it's basically in the same spot as angle 3, angle 7. See, 3 is in the, in the bottom left, and 7 is in the bottom left of this group. So angle 3 and 7 would go together. And then what else is left? 4 and 8. So these would be your corresponding angles. Okay, here's the last type of angles that we're going to do. And I'll just write this down. They're called consecutive. 
which means one right after the other. Okay, that's what consecutive means. Consecutive interior angles. I'll just shorthand a lot of this stuff, okay? Consecutive interior angles. Consecutive means one right after the other. Now, this book uses this phrase, consecutive interior angles. I used um, another phrase from another book, and to tell you the truth, I kind of like theirs better. Now, we're going to stick with consecutive interior angles, but I just want to share that with you. Another book that I used to use called them Same Side and that describes it, I think, a little bit better, interior angles, all right? We're talking about the same group of angles, but they depends on the book, on how they name them, okay? This book uses, I'll put a little star, this little book, or this little book, this book uses consecutive interior angles. Another book that I use, use same side, but I think same side describes the situation a little bit better, so let's take a look. Uh, let's start with angle three. If I said the same side interior angles, so same side of what? Well, the same side of the transversal, and they have to be interior. So I'm leaving out one, two, seven, and eight. So which one is on the same side of the transversal and an interior angle? Yep, that'd be angle five right there. So I would say that angle three and angle five would be same side interior angles. But remember, we're not using that phrase in this book. We're using this phrase consecutive interior angles and it still makes sense because they're one right after another it's the one it's the interior angle that's next to this angle three which is this angle five and some of you guys would think oh this is next to it yeah but it's not on the same side of the transversal okay that's what consecutive all right i think you understand why i like that same side interior better than consecutive but three and five would be consecutive interior angles and you have one more pair what would that be it's what's left four and six they're on the same side of the transversal and um, they're interior angles, all right? So that's what consecutive interior angles are. So angle four and angle six would also be consecutive interior angles. Okay, here's a quick example and we'll finish with this. Now, I made the lines look a little different, go, go in a different direction, and I jumbled the numbers up just a little bit so it wouldn't be quite like uh, the example I just finished going over. So what they're going to ask you to do is they're going to give you a situation like this, and they're going to say, name the uh, alternate interior angles. I'm not going to write all that down just for uh, time's sake, but if I asked you to name the alternate interior angles, what would they be? Well, it would be angle 7 and angle 5, and it'd be angle four and angle two. Why? Because they're in between the two lines and they're complete opposites of each other. Seven and five are complete opposites, but their interior four and two would be complete opposites. So they would be alternate interior angles. What about alternate exterior angles? Well, that would be one and eight, and it would be three and six. What about can, uh, corresponding angles? Let's go corresponding. Remember, which one matches up Remember this clump of four and this clump of four? Which one down here matches up with angle one? Well, angle five would be in the same spot as angle one. So one and five would be corresponding. What else would be corresponding? Four and six, three and two, seven and eight. So those would be your corresponding angles. And then your last ones would be consecutive interior angles. So seven and two would be consecutive interior angles. And so would four and five. So that's kind of what they're getting you to do. Remember, this is basically just vocab. Um, we're not really doing a whole lot of stuff with real numbers now. In the next lesson, we will. We're going to talk about some things being equal and some other stuff that's going to go on. Okay, But on this lesson, it's just basically getting you into the wordage and um, the vocab of parallel lines and transversals. All right, well, that's it. And um, good luck on your homework.